Back in May 2016, a day before the launch of Doom 2016, George Broussard, co-founder of 3D Realms and Apogee tweeted this. Oh boy, I'm still playing Uncharted. Please be good. Please be good. Hoping that Doom 2016 is a good game. Then there was this quote tweet from Marcus Preston, better known as The Notch. He proceeds to tell his Twitter followers to... Don't be like this man. Don't play first-person shooters on consoles. While both parties kept their friendship after a couple of exchanges, I have an honest opinion about the tweet. Despite the tone, he isn't wrong. You shouldn't play a shooter game on a console. Or more specifically, a controller. But why? Doesn't Call of Duty, Destiny, and Halo feel responsive? The truth is, the analog joystick isn't good for aiming. And both developers and players find a way to ease the aiming with those tricks. On the developer side, there's aim assist. Aim assist automatically targets and follows the enemy within the crosshair. You press and hold the left trigger to snap the enemy when the crosshair is in close proximity. And there's bullet magment. To keep it short, you shoot the person off by a certain degree of the crosshair, but it will register as a hit. On the gamer's side, players can adjust the sensitivity of the horizontal and vertical axis. With the default settings, moving the camera with the joystick is very slow and it takes a couple of seconds to turn the camera to the right. Increasing it does mitigate this, but you have to move the camera a bit to aim at the enemy. Adjusting your game's optimal configuration settings and you can enjoy a quick multiplayer session in no time. If you're a professional gamer with lots of experience with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, then it's possible to kill a player with a sniper rifle in a 360 degree turn without looking at the scope. Oh! 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 Oh, oh my god! Oh! Are you oh, are not oh, recording? Are you recording, Crickshaw? Oh, 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 oh. You can give some thanks to Aim Assist for that. But what if we decide to get rid of every single aim assistance and you play a shooter with the unfiltered analog stick? This is the result. Just imagine this with the mouse input. Just imagine it. Because that will bring a huge disadvantage to the controller people. Aim Assist has brought a mountain of debate ever since Halo popularized the FPS genre. But then, a certain company decided to release a game that introduces a new input method that changes the way how gamers play shooters. Platoon popularized gyro motion aiming. Simply put, you use the controller's gyroscope to tilt around, as if you're using a mouse. You can use the joystick to move the camera like you always do in a first or third person shooter, but when it's time to aim and shoot someone, the gyro can help fine tune your aiming. With fast paced shooters, the gyro allows you to kill fast moving enemies more accurately, instead of using aim assist with the joystick. You're not required to play Wii music when you can sit on your couch and slightly tilt your controller. It's not the first time Nintendo has dabbled with motion aiming before, but when Splatoon was first released, most players were confused with gyro was the first, but over time, People start to adapt and they realize that gyro aiming is superior to analog joystick. Alongside Splatoon's generally good gameplay and its innovations, gyro aiming has been slowly becoming more popular as time goes on. So popular that Doom 2016's Nintendo Switch version added motion aiming due to player demands. Meanwhile, in Valve time, Valve Corporations, makers of such hits as 
was working on a completely different controller that aims to make the best of both controllers and keyboard mouse words. The Steam Controller. The Steam Controller focuses on emulating the precision of the mouse and simplification of the gamepad with the large amount of customizations that the controller has on the software side. Initially, the trackpad was the main highlight of making keyboard mouse emulation possible. But players found out that Splatoon style motion aiming is also possible by simply enabling it on the Steam Controller config. Steam input team was surprised to see players combining both motion aiming and touch pads. That became a major highlight for the December 2015 update blog. Valve has updated the controller in the software side for over the past several months with new features and quality of life changes. The Steam Controller's API has been expanded to support DualShock 4, Xbox controllers, Nintendo Switch Pro controller, and other inputs. So let's skip the obligatory video essay and show you how the gyroscope can be used with two categories. Typing in an on-screen keyboard tends to take too long to type a single sentence. That's why predictions are a thing to speed up the process. But when it comes to making an essay to Metaton in Honor Tales console version or typing to Virtual Strangers in PlayStation Home, you better off buying a Bluetooth keyboard or download a second screen app if you want to send messages to your friend faster. But there's a better alternative, gyro typing. In PlayStation 4, you can use the gyro or the touchpad to type a sentence a bit faster. While it's not the perfect solution, it's pretty close. Not a big fan of Steam's on-screen keyboard for big picture mode while using a DualShock 4 or the Switch Pro controller? Not a problem. You can enable gyros and do a couple remaps and it works similarly to PS4's on-screen keyboard. Even if it's not designed for gyro typing. But anyway, let's move on to your next section. Ever since the release of Bungie's Destiny, we're starting to see more games to use cursor-based menus as seen in No Man's Sky, Assassin's Creed Origins and Odyssey, Steep, and Warframe. But before Destiny, Gran Turismo uses snap cursors, which snaps the icon or button by simply using the D-pad while the joystick is the actual cursor. But with Destiny's menus, it's a perfect blend of PC UI menu and console UI menu. Of course, there are going to be pros and cons to this menu style. First, the pros. It unifies the controller, touch, and mouse interface. And it's easier to navigate the inventory in a few clicks. And the cons. The layout of the menu can be overwhelming at times. On PS4, you cannot use the touchpad to navigate the menu. And worst of all, the cursor sensitivity is so slow. Yes, I know that navigating with a mouse is better than a joystick, but I found an alternative solution. So I have the keyboard mouse emulated as a controller, and have the gyro set as a mouse. And look at this. It's so much better to navigate with the gyro than it is with a controller. With Steam input, it is possible to use the gyro and the touchpad for games that is primarily designed for keyboard mouse, such as Counter-Strike, Global Offensive, Quake Champions, and of all the games you could pick, I have to go with Fate Stay Night. I can see the developers using gyros for RTS and point-to-click adventure games. Now let's just move on to the next category. There are games that use the gyros as gimmicks, such as doing the graffiti in Infamous Second Son, or you're gonna shake your remote in Donkey Kong Country Returns, or you have to stay absolutely still in Until Dawn, or QT motion sensor actions in any Quantum Dreams games. Uh oh shit! Oh shit! Shit shit shit! Back up, back up! Oh god, I disconnected my controller already. Good job, me. But there are some games that handle this differently.
Tearaway is one of those games that takes full advantage of the PlayStation 4's features. While I don't have time to cover everything, but I will focus on how you can customize your messenger with the light cursor, acting as a mouse. But if you want to create your own decorations or costumes, this is where you can go to the cutting mat. With the touchpad or the PS4 second screen app, you can draw a decoration. For example, I start by drawing a panda head with the touchpad, while I have the cursor to move each layer. Once I finish drawing, I use the panda head and stamp it to the messenger's backpack. It's similar to how you use the layer system in Photoshop to create a character or background, except that it's paper craft. Media Monaco took this style a step further by combining Little Big Planet and Game Engines into Dreams, which the entire UI is specifically designed for motion sensors in mind. Although, not every game needs to copy Dreams. I would love to see more developers using the Java mechanic for more meaningful functions instead of gimmicks. In the world of racing simulators, your car, your driving skills, the tracks, and your sportsmanship plays a huge role in other racing. While it is playable with just an analog stick, the best way to experience racing sims is to buy a racing wheel, and it can be expensive to find the best racing wheel that is compatible with your game. But what if you can't afford the wheel, but you still want the feel of the racing wheel? This is where motion controls comes to play. When you choose motion sensor functions on the controller settings in Gran Turismo Sport, you can tilt the controller to steer the vehicle. You can position your controller upwards, rest your elbows, and start tilting left and right as if you're using the steering wheel. Right off the bat, gyro steering gives you more control with your car's movement, making smoother turns, and staying still while needing to flick the joystick constantly like you would in Dry Club. It does take a bit of time to get used to. Once you adapt to it, it feels like a budget racing wheel. It's possible to put gyro steering in games like Dry Club and Race the Sun via the Steam input. It may not be my preferred way of playing those games, but the option is there. Racing wheels is definitely superior to controllers, but gyro steering will bridge the gap between gyros and wheels. I really hope to see more racing simulators to adapt to motion sensors in the near future. As I previously mentioned, gyro camera basically works like a mouse input for the camera, except that motion sensors is involved. To demonstrate, I will compare the difference between aiming with the mouse, joystick, and the gyro with this nifty comparison. To better illustrate the benefits of the gyro camera, I have selected 4 games as a demo to showcase the gyro camera in action. Ever since the release of the Steam controller, Porta 2 is one of the few games that natively supports Steam input. Because of that, it uses in-game actions instead of input styles. The good news is that the camera also functions as an in-game action. It makes it easier to have true motion sensor functions instead of emulating the mouse. The gyro cam will come in handy for certain puzzle chambers that requires you to move the camera faster while flying or shooting portals at a far away distance. Porta 2 is the perfect game for gyro camera and I would definitely recommend everyone who's getting started with motion sensors to try it out. Gravity Rush is a first-party open-world action-adventure game and is one of a few PlayStation titles that heavily relies on motion sensors. Their main protagonist, Cat, can fall around the world by manipulating gravity. 
Pressing the R1 button will have her start floating in a 360 degree camera. Then you can aim the camera with the right stick or tilting your controller and then pressing the same button to start falling forward. One of the key benefits of the gyro camera is that you can quickly make turns while shifting gravity. You can look around with the gyro without using a joystick and you can adjust your aiming during melee combat. With a bit of practice, you can match the gyro camera and pull off those moves during combat. Sunset Overdrive was the game I was looking forward to back in 2014. The gameplay is a mix between Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Desert Radio, and a little bit of Ratchet and & Clank. And I like it! But I can't love the game with the controller. Sunset is a fast paced game where you have to constantly move, grind, and suit ODs around Sunset City. And you will be overwhelmed with so many ODs thanks to the game's camera. Since I'm playing the PC version, I decided to switch to keyboard and mouse. I can easily roll run, zip line, grind rails, and shoot all these way faster than a controller. This has gotten to the point that I'm playing a completely different game. I have way more fun with Sunset than I initially thought. What if I decided to fix the game's control scheme by emulating keyboard and mouse input style within Steam input? I did exactly that, and it took me 2-4 to four hours to create this config, and it's a significant improvement over the default gamepad. To demonstrate, I made a quick comparison video between controller, keyboard mouse, and gyro camera. You know what? Maybe to play a little bit of Sunset of the Drive.
I love this game. Playing Doom 2016 with the keyboard mouse makes you feel like the Doom Slayer. But that doesn't mean the controllers are left out of the party, as it's also on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch consoles. With the controller's aim assist, the crosshair will follow the mentally challenge while you aim at them. This is a way to compensate for the game's fast moving gameplay. While it makes it easier to move and shoot with the controller, it feels a little bit slow to play, especially in higher difficulties. Playing with the controller makes you feel like you press the Doom Slayer's automatic mode. But, there is a way to press the manual mode. If you enable motion aiming on the control settings in the Nintendo Switch version, or set the gyro to mouse input via Steam input, you can aim around by tilting your controller. To better demonstrate, here's a quick gameplay from the near beginning of the game on Hurt Me Plenty difficulty. Let's get started. Okay, this is way too easy. Let's crack up the difficulty to Nightmare on Vega Center Processing Map. And let's see how capable I am with the gyro camera. Complete the 
Holy cow, that was hard. So, you want to try out the gyros? The bad news is that, unless you own a Nintendo console, motion aiming is rarely implemented ever since Splatoon made it popular. Third party games like Doom 2016, Fortnite, Turok, Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus, and Super Hot has incorporated gyro aiming in a post release patch or is included right in the box. And despite the DualShock 4 supporting gyroscope, they get ignored. As of making this video, there's only two games that remember that DualShock 4 can do gyro aiming. And it's Paladins and there is a gun. Yes, even Ben Studios embrace the gyros. Take notes, Snide Dog. But there's good news. If you're a PC player and have a controller that supports gyroscope, you can download and use DS4 Windows for DualShock 4 controllers or Joyshock Mapper to enable gyros. But Steam input is the easiest of the bunch. How do you enable it? Let me introduce you to my good pal, Text to Speech. Take it away. Thanks, Al. First, connect your DualShock 4, Nintendo Switch Pro Controller or Steam Controller to your computer or laptop via USB cable or Bluetooth. Open the Steam application, click Big Picture Mode icon, go to Settings, Controller, Controller Settings, and then hover to Detected Controller to register your controller. If you have a DualShock 4 or Switch Pro Controller, make sure to enable PlayStation or Nintendo Switch Pro Controller support. After that, you can customize your controller configuration as much as you want, as well as getting access to hundreds of configurations made by the Steam community. In fact, I have created a set of configurations specifically designed for DualShock 4's motion sensors. I call it DS4 Gyro Optimized Config. I have a couple of configs ready for you to try, such as Doom 2016, Porta 2, Sun's Overdrive, Dirt Rally, Counter Strike Global Offensive, Race the Sun, Warframe, Destiny 2, Dying Light, Steep, Watch Dogs 2, and even Fate Stay Night Relta Noir. If you like to use my config, you can go to the description of this video or the pinned comment and you can copy paste the link in the address bar and apply configuration. To end this video, I will make a feedback to three groups. To the developers, please consider implementing gyro UI, steering, and camera to your game if necessary. On or off as default, it should always be an optional feature. For the PC side, Steam input does allow the developers to set the camera as an in-game action, as seen in Portal 2. This is very close to a console games that provides a separate camera for the gyro. Steam input is certainly better than Flower's implementation of the Java camera in the PC version. I would love to see more PC developers considering Steam input API. Of course, you can read all about the API on Steamworks or GyroWiki. Links in the description down below. To Valve, you should add more Java related features to the Steam input like a ability to pause a Java camera. Currently, you can't reset the Java like you would with Splatoon, Gravity Rush, or Terry unfold it. My workaround is to make always on gyro as a button press. With the majority of my configurations, I have to press and hold the R3 button and then I can quickly align the controller and let go of the button. Adding a time activate will solve this problem. I will make a gyro button press as a timer. So wherever I press a button, the gyro will pause for a set duration of the time. Once it pauses, the gyro is re-enabled. Adding the ability to have the gyro to be activated within an in-game action instead of a button input is like an end switch Lubic Planet. This solves Left 4 Dead 2's rifle scope sensitivity problem while allowing gimmicks like the Dusak 4's light bar to change based on the in-game action. This one's for you, Jip Smart. Adding circular direction for the right stick camera. I will let Jip Smart to explain this better with a little snippet from his video. This is the flick stick. It lets you turn the camera by rotating the right stick. When you first press the stick, you'll make a smooth and quick flick to face exactly the same direction as the stick. You can make further adjustments by rotating the stick, giving you quick access to whatever direction suits you best. The right stick is too small for really precise aiming, and the flick stick provides no way to aim vertically, but that's what the gyro is for. When developers treat the gyro as a mouse, players enjoy far more precision than they're used to with a controller. 
And while that can be laid on top of traditional right stick aiming just fine, flick stick takes it to a new level, giving the average player more freedom to respond to threats from any direction than even a traditional mouse on a big mouse pad. Adding gyro controller reader, which helps the community to test out the sensitivity of the gyros without exiting Steam guide menu. It can't be the same thing with the joystick and left or right triggers. And please update the on-screen keyboard layout for non-Steam controller users and be allowed to use the gyros in style of PS4's on-screen keyboard. And lastly, to you. Listen, I know that you might be one of many people that will scoff this video off and believe motion controls is a bane of existence based on your first impression a long time ago. But I'm not here to argue that. YouTuber Neron has already covered that. My job with this video is that I can show you that motion sensors can be better used for shooters, driving, and cursor based minions than just gimmicks. So please, please give gyro sensors a chance. Thanks for watching the video. I spent a month writing, recording, creating configs, and editing this video while working in a different video in between. So I want to give a shout out to JipSmart, Critical Input, Existential Egg, Neron, and the Steam Controller subreddit. Making mainline videos takes time and energy, and I'm a slow worker at that. But if you'd like to support me and my work, you can donate me on streamlabs.com slash air 2 But regardless, I see you guys in the next video.